One of the more common reasons that I see people give for using Arch Linux is the package manager. Now, there's no doubt that Pacman is an awesome package manager. It's quite a bit faster than other package managers, certainly faster than Portage, but even other binary package managers like APT or DPKG, they seem to be a little bit slower than Pacman as well. And of course, Pacman is more human readable, which just makes it easier to work with. Uh, it's also just, in my opinion, inherently easier to learn uh, compared to something like Portage, and it's a lot more powerful than other binary package managers. So it's it's kind of got a good balance between ease of use and power that you get with it. Uh, no wonder, it's one of the reasons that Arch Linux is so awesome. But is it possible to use another package manager, like Pacman for example, inside of a non-Arch based system so that you can have all of the benefits of Pacman without actually installing Arch or Manjaro? And is it a good idea to do this? In fact, that question is probably the more important one to answer, so I'll answer it first for the people with short attention spans. No, it is not a great idea to install multiple package managers on your Linux distro. And the reason why is that you're very quickly going to end up in dependency hell if you do this. Now, let me give you a quick breakdown for those of you that are fortunate enough to have never actually been to dependency hell before. When you install high-level applications, like let's say a web browser or some type of game, for example, there's going to be a lot of other smaller, simpler programs that those big programs depend on to work. Uh, in fact, that's where we get the name dependency from. These dependencies are like little building blocks that larger software takes advantage of in order for it to do its thing. And a lot of the time, this high-level software requires very specific versions of those dependencies in order to build and operate correctly. Um, I can do a depth graph of Firefox, for example. So this is going to show all the dependencies for Firefox, and you can see each of these has a specific version that it wants in order for Firefox 84 uh, to build. And if the right version isn't there, I mean, it might work, it might not work. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a toss up. But you see, there's you know so many things that have very specific versions uh, that Firefox wants now. If you're just using one package manager, this isn't a problem because it's going to install those dependencies for you uh, when you go to install that application. And since all of these applications are being maintained by the same package manager, it can just install the exact version for each dependency you need and everything's hunky-dory, no problems there. But if you install similar applications, like let's say Firefox through Portage, and then Chromium through Pac-Man. Firefox and Chromium, they're both web browsers, so they're likely to share a lot of dependencies. You're probably going to end up with conflicting versions of those dependencies. Uh, Firefox, as it's built through uh, Portage, or as it expects to be built through Portage, might require a particular version of Perl, and then Pac-Man, as it's built through um, the Arch devs, it might require a newer version, or these packages might require different versions of OpenSSL. You see, there's so many areas where this can happen, and it is going to happen. Each Linux distro is designed differently, and especially when we're talking about distros that have different package managers, the differences are usually not just something trivial, like a different desktop environment or a different color scheme or just a different logo for the distro. There's usually differences in the low level software, like the init system, for example. I've talked about this a ton of times, but 99% of Linux distros use systemd as their init system. And systemd is also radically different from like OpenRC or Runit. Uh, so, the developers of a distro like Linux Mint, for example, they're probably building all of their packages, uh, expecting them to be only installed in a Linux or a systemd environment. Um, you know, there's no OpenRC version of Mint, so why would they bother building them that way? 
Uh, so if you try to install them in a place that has OpenRC or run it, and you're dealing with a package that actually interacts with the init system, uh, and again, there's a lot that systemd actually does, so higher chance that the package does interact with the init system, it's not going to work correctly on Runit or OpenRC. Uh, same thing with SSL library. So anything that has to do with networking, if there's encryption involved, it's gonna need an SSL library. If we're dealing with a distro like Void Linux, for example, that's built with LibreSSL. Pretty much every other Linux distro is built with OpenSSL. Uh, there are ways to migrate some distros um, from like OpenSSL to LibreSSL. I've done videos about that on Gentoo. But again, as you guys saw, there's very specific versions of packages that are necessary uh, in order to get things working when you do that. Uh, now, luckily, in Gentoo, you can do it with an overlay, so the overlay just ships with all those specific versions of the uh, packages in order to get things like Firefox built against LibreSSL. Um, but again, it, uh, it you're not always going to get that in other distros. Like, not every distro has overlays, so yeah, you would have to figure all of that stuff out on your own. Uh, when you install two different package managers, they don't talk to one another. So what's probably going to happen is whichever package manager you installed applications from last are going to get their dependencies installed and then wipe out everything that was installed by the previous package manager. And this will probably happen regardless if both applications have the exact same dependencies because of course with Portage, you have a bit more control over what version of every single package you want installed. So you could theoretically look up how the Arch devs build Firefox, for example, and then build your Chromium in such a way that it's not going to create those dependency conflicts. Um, but even then, if you do that, they're going to get overridden. And then of course, in Gentoo, there's use flags, for example. So <laughs> there can still be differences in your dependencies, even if they're on the exact same version, just because of use flag differences. And so if you stomp out those dependencies, uh, like if we go back to the Perl dependency example, um, my, uh, my shell that I'm using here, URXVT, actually has Perl as a dependency because I use some of the uh, scripts like the font config to uh, just change my font size on the fly, and then the keyboard um, select and keyboard paste, that's for copying and pasting text into the shell. Uh, so yeah, if I end up screwing up my Perl, then I could end up screwing up URXVT, uh, which means now I don't have a shell just because I tried to install something through Pac-Man. And obviously that's going to be a real pain in the ass to fix, uh, trying to resolve dependency hell without a shell. <laughs> so with that long dramatic warning out of the way, how do you actually go about installing Pac-Man uh, on a, another Linux distro? Because I don't know if you guys saw before, but I do have Pac-Man on Gentoo here. Uh, so Pac-Man, like most other software in Linux, is free and open source. So you do have access to the source code for Pac-Man. It's just at sources.archlinux.org. Uh, and then, you know, forward slash other, forward slash Pac-Man. So yeah, you could just download the latest version there and then go ahead and build it on your system just like you would build uh, any other software from source. Uh, on Gentoo, we actually are lucky enough to have um, Pac-Man. Oh, it would help if I specified my package name. Uh, we're actually lucky enough to have Pac-Man uh, available through an overlay. So it's this one here, the gig overlay. You can just add that to your system and then you'll be able to install Pac-Man. And uh, yeah, basically just works on your system the same way that it would on an Arch-based system. And another cool thing that Gentoo does is it seems to actually segregate your Arch Linux packages 
um, and your Gen 2 packages. This might be because uh, Pac-Man actually used to be available in the regular Gen 2 repository. Um, it was deprecated some time ago. I mean, like I said, this isn't a very good idea to do in the first place, so it probably wasn't worth uh, maintaining. Um, but anyway, if you go to var, uh, let's see, I think it's var chur root arch linux. Uh, yeah, so you basically see you have a whole uh, like arch linux environment here inside of this folder. Um, and once we install something, um, oh, I should probably demonstrate that this does actually uh, work for installing stuff. So let's do like, um, let's see, do I have nano on here? Okay, I don't have nano. So if I sudo pacman nano, and you'll see, again, it's pulling in all of these dependencies, even though I actually have all of these on my system already. But luckily, it's not going to wipe out my bin folder. So we just installed that, and now I actually have a uh, bin folder and then all these different library folders as well, but again, it's inside of this directory here. So if I go into bin, now I have nano. Uh, so yeah, I've only been able to install simple applications so far. Um, you know, things like uh, Chromium don't work, for example, probably because, again, there's all types of uh, crazy specific things that it wants in order to work correctly, and so it's just not going to behave on a Gentoo system. Uh, you could always just compile it from Portage, you know, that's that's the whole fun reason for using Gentoo in the first place, right, is compiling all your packages from source. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Uh, if you're looking to experiment, if you haven't had a good excuse for maybe breaking your Linux system in a while, try throwing another package manager on there and see how long it lasts.